I know the transition into digital capture from shooting film can be difficult for some folks, but please bear in mind that very few things in the digital portraiture world are more important than accurate exposures. You're going to need to get into control on the light values or illumination values of each one of the strobes on your set. Here's a portrait that's an excellent example of a properly exposed digital image that has all the detail in the highlight areas, the shadow areas, as well as a great looking mid-tone value that gives us not only all the tone and texture and color we're looking for, but it's a dream to print out on paper. Now if you're watching this video and you don't see the highlight detail on your TV screen or you don't see a good mid-tone value on your computer monitor, don't panic. You do have to realize though that the sample images that we show in this video were shot with the digital equipment you see on the set, then they were reduced in resolution to fit into the video editing software, then the video editing software compresses the video in order to fit on the DVD disc that you're watching. Every step of that reduces our image quality enough so it makes it kind of difficult for you to see all the details in the original photo file. But we have put a series of images from this DVD on ShootSmarter.com in a form right from the camera. We have the image that you just saw in the Info Center. Click on the Will Crockett section and you'll be able to download the original file from the camera. No retouching, no image manipulation at all. Also, for you folks who don't have a broadband connection and don't want to download a three and a half meg file, I've taken the file, made it smaller, haven't done anything else to it. So, if you'd like, go ahead and download those files, open them up on your computer, take a good look at the highlight information, and Let's take a closer look at that file to see not only its normal values, but what happens when we overexpose the image by one half stop. It quickly loses its highlight detail and gives us a poor quality portrait. Here's that same image underexposed by one full stop. Notice it yields an image that's flat, dark, and dull. Please don't fall into that trap of getting your exposures close and fixing them in Photoshop. Poor exposures means poor image quality in the digital capture realm, and there's really no reason for it. Why would you want to waste all that time fixing files that you could have shot right in the first place? Here's my tip for you. Get in control of your exposures. Get yourself a handheld flash meter that you're comfortable with and the one that's accurate. Make the exposure corrections that you need before you press the shutter. You'll be very glad you did. Let me show you just how easy it is to get excellent exposures with your digital capture system. First, start with a premium quality digital readout flash meter. Spend the money to buy the meter that you really want to use and that you're comfortable with. You'll find that in my section of the Info Center at ShootSmarter.com, there's an article that presents ratings and features and even recommendations of the flash meters that I think are the best ones for photography. Next, switch your camera to its manual exposure mode, then plug in the chip speed ISO of your digital camera right into the meter. Now if you already have a premium quality flash meter, but you suspect its readings are inaccurate, you can send it back to the manufacturer to have it recalibrated, or an easier and sometimes faster method is to check out our Calibrate Your Flash Meter DVD that lets you do it yourself. You can find more information on that DVD, you guessed it, at ShootSmarter.com. Now when it comes to metering, you'll discover that there's two different techniques in the industry. One way of thinking is to point the dome of the meter into the light source, and one is to point into the lens. I'm a commercial photographer. We've been shooting transparency film for over 20 years. And transparency film is very picky on under and over exposure, just like digital capture. You'll find that most commercial photographers point their dome into the lens, not into the light source. And did you know that all three major meter manufacturers, that would be Sekonic, Gossin, and Minolta, all say in their instruction manuals to point your dome into the lens as well. Well, I want you to try my metering method and see if you don't discover that it's the simplest, easiest, 
and most accurate way to get very good and very predictable digital capture exposures. Come with me and I'll show you how it works. Now when we're talking about metering main lights and fill lights, either by themselves or together, we need to take the meter and place it into the spot of our photograph that we want the most accurate exposure. And being as we're shooting digital portraits, we want to have the most accurate exposure on our subject's face to get the best looking skin tone possible. To do that, we can take our meter, place it into the scene that we want our best exposure, which is right here underneath our subject's chin, because that allows us to keep the meter's dome back at the same plane that our subject's face and eyes are. Point the dome into the lens, not kinda into the lens or sorta into the lens, but exactly into the lens, and take a test reading. We can measure the main all by itself, the fill by itself, or both of them together, just like this, F11-0, right on the nose. First, let's select a working aperture for the portrait we're about to create. I've chosen F11 just to make it nice and easy. So, set your digital capture camera to an aperture setting of F11 and your shutter speed to 125th of a second. Now, select a light modifier for your main light, put it into your shot wherever you'd like to have it, then let's set the illumination value of that main light to F11-0. We're going to measure that by placing our meter into the point of the photo that we want the most perfect exposure, which is right here, point of the dome exactly into the lens, and adjusting the power level of that main light so that we get a meter reading of F11-0. Not F11 and 1, not F8 and 9 tenths, but F11 and 0. Now if you cannot adjust the power level of your strobe system accurately within tenths of an f-stop, you can move the light source away to reduce its illumination value or move it closer to increase your illumination value. But be sure you don't go too far back or too close as light placement will affect the contrast of your image. Now, once you get a proper exposure of only your main light, no other strobes firing, it should look something like this. The relationship between how bright our main light is compared to how bright our fill light is is called a lighting ratio. And we're going to use a typical lighting ratio found in portraiture referred to as a 5 to 1 ratio. What that means is that our main light is going to be two stops brighter than our fill light. And being as we have our main light set to F11-0 and our camera's working aperture set to F11-0, we know that our fill light needs to provide illumination at F560. That would be two stops less than 11. So in order to measure that, we need to first shut off our main light or spin it around on the stand so it's pointing in the opposite direction. Then put the meter into the spot that you want the most perfect exposure. Remember, right underneath our subject's chin. Point the dome of the meter right into the lens and make a test exposure, F560. And here's our example image. You'll notice that it's dark. That's because our camera was set to a working aperture of F11, but the illumination provided by the fill light was only at F56. This results in a two-stop underexposure, and that's exactly what we want from our fill light in a 5 to 1 lighting ratio.